Alright, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use this uh, propagation of errors equation. Alright, so first thing to note, um, the equation itself is right here. Okay, um, And what the, the, I, I think the, the major confusion that some of you are going to have are what's going on right here and right here right um, so first things first let's let's back up and and uh, uh, review some notation so in this course essentially anytime you see a sigma symbol like this okay this is going to represent some uncertainty Right. So this is a measure of how well uh, you are able to perform a measurement. And your uncertainty is going to be dictated by different um, factors when you take different types of measurements. Um, but every measurement has some inherent uncertainty with it. So I'm not going to go through all of the different ways that uncertainty can crop up here. Um, that's addressed elsewhere, specifically in the PowerPoint. Um, so I want to actually focus on how to use this equation and, and what it means, okay? So first things first, uh, since sigma represents uncertainty, what that would mean is that this quantity right here, this sigma x, is the uncertainty in my x calculation, uh, or x measurement, rather. And sigma y would represent the uncertainty in my y measurement, okay? Now, um, so, for example, let's say that I have, suppose this is a perfect square, okay, um, or a rectangle, it doesn't really matter, but it has some length x, let's say it has some length x, and it has some height y, all right, and I want to calculate the area, and the area of a box is going to be equal to length times width, or length times height, whatever, uh, um, notation you want to use, but in this case x and y. Alright, so my area is going to be given by my x measurement, my length measurement, and y, my height measurement. Okay, um, so each of these numbers, okay, x is going to have with it an associated uncertainty, right? So, for example, um, we might say, just pull a number off the top of my head, let's say that I measure uh, the length to be uh, 8.0 centimeters, but that it also carries with it um, an uncertainty of, let's say, 0 0.2 centimeters. Okay, so that's my measurement. Um, so this 0.02 right here would represent the sigma, all right? That 0.02 um, represents, or I'm sorry, 0 0.2 represents the uncertainty in the x value. So that is what would get plugged in right here, All right? And for kicks and giggles, let's let's make it a different value. Let's 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 not make it a square. Uh, let's say that we measure it to be 10.5, and the uncertainty on the y is the same because we use the same ruler. And so let's say let's say that these are our dimensions, okay? Eight for the uh, length and ten point five for the height, and they both carry this uncertainty of uh, zero point two. All right. And when you're using the same ruler, that's often going to be the case. Okay. So we can calculate what the area is. We can calculate the area. That's just going to be eight times uh, ten point five, uh, which, if I'm not mistaken, is eighty four. So the area should be 84 square centimeters, right? But what about this plus minus business, okay? That is what we are doing right now, okay? That is what we are doing right now. And so that is what this whole calculation does, okay? That, that's what this calculation is going to give us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this out. So the uncertainty in my area 
is going to be equal to the uncertainty in my x squared multiplied by this funny business. Um, and here, okay, um, I, did, I didn't write this down, but I'm assuming that this function z, I'm assuming that z is a function of x and y in the following form, x times y. Okay, so um, in this case, the z would represent my area, and then x and y would represent themselves. Okay, and what this uh, symbol is, is known as a partial derivative. Okay, so you all should have seen derivatives before. Uh, but what this is, is a partial derivative. And a partial derivative is used when we have a function of more than one variable. Okay, so let's, let's start with the... Uh, we need a new name for this, right? Um, some people call this partial a over partial x uh, as, as a replacement for da dx, which is probably the language you remember from calculus. Um, but a normal derivative operator and a partial derivative operator, while do, uh, they perform essentially the same function, they do it in a different manner, right? The uh, uh, normal derivative um, uh, only acts on functions that have one variable, whereas the partial derivative acts on functions that have multiple variables. And so um, what this does, okay, if I want to take dA dx, right, that means I'm going to take the partial of this function, x times y, right? So what this does is it says, okay, take everything that's multiplied together that is not x and assume that it is constant. So I can hold this y constant. And so I'm going to bring that y out front of the derivative operator. And I'm just going to let the differential act on x. And then, of course, dx over dx is just 1. So the partial of the partial derivative of my area with respect to x is just my value y. I do the same thing with my y value, take the partial of my area with respect to y, and I get this. And again, since I'm taking the partial with respect to y, hold everything in the argument constant that's not y, so bring that out, and take the derivative of y with respect to y, and that goes to 1, so my result is just x. Okay, So dA over dx is y, dA dy is just x. Now, that's not always going to be the case, right? Uh, this could be a little bit more exotic. Um, if I had something like z is equal to x squared times y, right? Then I would say that d z dx is equal to y times d dx of x squared. And that would turn into y times 2x, right? So it's not always going to be the case where I just flip my values, right? Where dA dx becomes y, dA dy becomes x. That's not always going to be the case. I do have to be very careful. I do have to take the full functionality uh, into account, all right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this. Um, you can pause the video and rewind it if you need to. Um, but we're going to save some space that we can uh, that way we can actually now do the calculation, All right? Um, so with that in mind, what we're going to do is.
plug our values in now. Okay. So uh, what we've got is I'm going to take this square root. And by the way, if this looks similar to the Pythagorean theorem, okay, it, it, it's related to the Pythagorean theorem, right? I have uh, essentially this is sigma x times del a del x, all of that quantity squared. I've just separated the squares among the quantities. So I have something squared plus something squared. Uh, this is called adding things in quadrature. All right, when you have uh, error calculations like this or any calculation where you're adding uh, squares of things and then end up taking the square root at the end. Uh, it's not just in geometry with triangles, but this this crops up all over the place. Uh, also, especially in vector analysis. Um, and so we're going to be using that kind of technique quite a bit. Um, or you will, uh, especially in the lecture when you get to the uh, vector um, chapters. But anyway, all right, so to completely fill in this equation, what I want to do is I'm going to plug in my value for sigma x, which is 0.02, or uh, 0.2 rather, 0.2, and let's squeeze the units in there. We do want to keep our units straight, um, and the result of dA dx was my y value, so this is going to be 10.5, and that's also going to be squared, and once again, my sigma y, and then dA dy was my x value, and all of that squared. And now that's a calculation that you can do with your calculator. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, you all can do that um, and come up with the final answer. But then this result of this calculation right is what gets plugged in right here for the plus and minus okay um, so that is how you use your uncertainty propagation of errors equation when you are given multiple individual measurements that combine up to a, uh, a further measurement okay I uh, hope you guys found this video helpful, and we will talk to you guys next time.